I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to take a look at one of the most useful, handy little functions that is available in Microsoft Access, and that is the IF function, uh, which allows you to do an either or uh, return and is very, very handy for those situations when you, you do, can't really do an if-then statement or something like that. And uh, also, you can use them on your forms and, and your reports, and you can use them in VBA, and you can use them in your queries. So without further ado, let's get to our IF statements in Microsoft Access. Are you a programmer looking for your next gig? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay, so this is a pretty cool topic. Um, I'm using the same file that we've used for quite a few other of our demonstrations, and I had two big fire files or tables, I guess you'd say, in here. One of them has 87,000, and the other one has about 300,000 records in them. You can see that it's fire data, it's actual hot spots, which are uh, one kilometer square uh, observances of hot spots by satellites. Uh, from NASA, and uh, I used this data in a machine learning, deep learning project, and uh, it was really cool. Um, so I thought it would be kind of a neat one. We can switch away from Candy. I know a lot of people are 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 saying that the Candy database is overdone now, so we'll we'll move on to some other kinds of data. And uh, this was a cool one. Um, you can see it has you know day night that FRP that's fire radiative power. And, uh, and we've got our latitude and longitude for the spot, and you know it's got an ID and all kinds of stuff on there. And um, so IIF is really cool because it helps you to, to uh, handle a, a situation where you've got, you know, you want to say, you know, if this, if this condition is true, then do this, otherwise do this other thing. And it's kind of like an if-then statement, but it's kind of like a very condensed one, and it's really great. So what you can do is you can create yourself a new query with whatever table that you're using, and you can choose some, some fields. And what I'll do is I'm just going to grab, I'll grab like the ID number and uh, the longitude, and then I guess the, the latitude here. Um, and uh, I'll grab some other fields here, maybe, I don't know, brightness or, or something like that. And what we can do is... Um, we can use these fields and then we can create an, an, an additional field um, to tell us um, more about the data that we have. So say uh, the data meets a certain condition, then we can give a response or a field value back um, using IIF. So in this case, I grabbed you know these, these fields here. Uh, and you can see the confidence is the last field there on the, on the right. Um, which is now on the left because I scrolled over. And what I can do is I can start off with something very simple. So what I could do is I can make a new uh, query field. I'll call it confident. And then I'll say I if uh, confidence is greater than 75 because that confidence uh, variable was between 0 and 100. Then I'll say uh, yes, otherwise no. And so that's an alphanumeric response or an alphanumeric um, return on that function. And so now if I go and I look at my query and I scroll to the right there, you can see, or if you look to the right side, you can see all of our fields are there. And then at the end of our query here, uh, we've got that confident no, yes, no, uh, because by using the, the confidence rating, which is the... Um, the 0 to 100, which is right beside it. And so that's an easy way of, of using an IIF um, function, um, but we could do more with it, uh, and it's, it's very, very handy if you want to explore a more complex condition. So say you might want to do, uh, I don't know, we'll call it a severe rating uh, or something like that, and we'll, uh, we could add uh, IIF again, and we could, you know, add some complexity to it. We could say, well, yes, the confidence is confidence is greater than seventy, uh, and um, say the uh, fire radiative power 
is greater than 1,000, which is actually quite high. Um, and so then we could say yes or no. And uh, that it makes it very, very handy and very simple for us to, to create these uh, returns that evaluate our data. And so now if I go and I take a look at our um, data, I'll expand this because we need a little bit more space now. And so you can see now if I look at the data, you can see we have a confident and a severe uh, rating as well. And so you can see some of them are yes and yes and some are yes, no. Uh, but it really depends on that additional uh, factor that we put in there, uh, which made it more complex. Uh, which kind of shows you how powerful the IIF statement really is. Now, IIF is used in access expressions, which means that it's even more handy because you can use it outside of your queries as well. You can use it in your forms. And so if we went and we chose to, to design a new form uh, and did something very simple like you know, we had two text boxes on, on our form and we wanted a third text box to evaluate um, the entries in the other two text boxes, we could do that using IIF. And so what I could do here is I could do a similar, uh, similar <clears throat> kind of scenario to what we saw with the data where I could say, uh, you know, this uh, txt confidence box so I'm gonna right click on and go to properties and then I'll give it a name txt confidence so now when I click on it you can see on the right that's the name of that text box and if I copy and paste that text box using control C control V you can see now I can uh, create another one called FRP and I'll give that a name of txt FRP so that we can uh, use those names uh, in our expression that will use IIF. And so if I copy and paste another text box in there in the same manner, uh, you can see that now I can say, uh, I guess we'll call this uh, uh, severe again. We'll, we'll use that one. Um, now this is not real fire severity ratings. If anybody's uh, wondering, this is uh, these are made up. Um, so uh, txt uh, severe is the name of our text box and you can see that we can put our uh, we can put our expression into the control source or you can type it directly where it says unbound in in the orange rectangle but we'll do it right here and we'll say IIF uh, txt confidence is greater than 70 and txt FRP is greater than 1,000, then yes, otherwise no. Um, and so IIF does that very nicely for us so that we can uh, have a little expression that will, you know, uh, give us some feedback and make it very easy to do a simple if statement. Uh, you can make them much more complex. Um, I'll show you a little bit more when we get into the VBA part. Uh, but here we go, we can click on our form view and now we can see uh, if I put 75 in it's still not severe uh, because there's no FRP but if I put 2000 in FRP you can see that the uh, that the rating or the severe rating changed and if I move it to 500 it goes back to no uh, if I go 25 you know 500 it's still no um, and so you can see that the uh, you can use the expression to, to really add some flavor to your uh, forms and your reports because uh, you, you can use it very, very easily. And so what I did there was I went to the Create ribbon and I clicked on Module and that's going to give us a fresh module here. I'm just going to put a very simple subroutine in here so that you guys can see and I'll call it my IIF uh, subroutine. 
And what, what we'll do is we're going to create a couple of variables and then we'll load those variables and then we'll do the same thing and, and I'll expand in the complexity a little bit so that you can see uh, what you can do uh, with IIF. And so what we'll do here, uh, we'll create one for confidence. We'll do a long integer uh, variable. Uh, we'll use a long integer variable for our uh, fire radiative power. We'll do uh, a string variable for our message that we're going to give back because I want to show you guys uh, that you don't have to put yeses and nos. You can actually return numbers or or you can return um, uh, sentences or whatever you want basically. Um, so I'll load that uh, confidence variable with the 71 and uh, fire radiative power of 12,000 and then we'll do the same thing. So now I'm going to load the the message string and so we'll say if our confidence is greater than 70 and our fire radiative power is greater than a thousand then we'll say this is a severe hotspot um, and uh, so we can type that in as a sentence as a return uh, value and uh, so you can use this in your return messages to users and things like that as well it's very very handy for message boxes and things and we'll say otherwise say nothing to see here move along and so we'll debug and we'll debug.print that message uh, as the final part of our uh, sort of subroutine here and I'll hit I'll hit play on the uh, toolbar up above you can say that you can see that it says uh, this is a severe hotspot which is the return because 71 is greater than 70 and 12,000 is greater than 1,000 and so um, you can see that uh, returns uh, the right value that we wanted to see and uh, and if we change the values to something else if I put in you know something like 32 and then uh, take a look at our values in here we can see we've got our 32 and our 12,000 uh, so that is going to give us uh, nothing to see here move along and so um, <clears throat> And we can also just see in our immediate window, we can call IIF because it is sort of part of the access ecosystem there as part of expressions. So I can do a question mark and I can say, uh, you know, so tell me IIF uh, if one equals two, then give me, you know, A, otherwise give me B. And uh, something like that, we could just type out if I could type here. Um, there we go. Uh, so we'll do A and B. And so you can see uh, we can call it from just about anywhere within Microsoft Access, uh, which makes it super handy. And, you know, if I change that, if 1 equals 1, then A. So there you go. But what if we had a third condition that we needed to get out of this? I mean, maybe uh, what if you know, it didn't capture, you know, 70 and 1,000, uh, over 70 and over 1,000 for those. Uh, but, you know, we wanted something else to be, you know, evaluated as an alternative output. And we can do that, too, by nesting our IIF statements. So we can put another IIF statement in either the true or the false um, case. Um, and... Uh, we'll put one into the false case now. So if it is a severe hotspot, then we'll give that value. But we'll say, you know what, if it didn't meet the criteria of the first uh, case, we'll say if the FRP, the fire radiative power, is still greater than 500, which is quite, quite high, then we could say, you know, hmm, I, you know, I think there's a fire here or something like that it did not meet the highest criteria which was our first IF uh, expression uh, but it was still enough to meet a second condition um, and it'll give that uh, you know something seems hot here but if it meets neither of those it'll say nothing to see here move along it's still too low you can see how uh, now IF you should use it sparingly in this case you know like if you have two or three uh, conditions 
that's great. Uh, put those together, but you will find that it'll turn into spaghetti if you uh, if you use too many of these in in one sort of uh, one row. And if you find that you're using a lot of these, then the solution is generally to create your own little function that uses a select case statement and see my video about that so you can say case this, case next, case next if it fits in there and then it returns it's much neater than doing it this way. But if you're in a bind you can put three or four uh, IIF statements together and you can evaluate all these different conditions and it makes it really awesome. Um, and it's super easy um, to use so you can see we actually got to evaluate three conditions over several fields that show and you know returning uh, various values depending on what we wanted and what the input values were and so um, you can see that this is quite powerful and so now if we change some values around uh, you can see um, that we'll get some different return results um, so if I put in you know a 90 for our confidence and uh, uh, let's see if I move our rate of power to 100 you can see it says nothing to see here move along if I change it to 10,000 then you'll see at the in the middle there uh, it gives us this is a severe hotspot and that's how you can use IF in Microsoft Access want to get extra content and other cool stuff make sure to check out my patreon the link is in the description